I'm your host, Mr. Mega Man Fan, and welcome back to Genesis Does. I don't own a complete inbox copy of Spot Goes to Hollywood. I see it goes for anywhere from $20 to $22 on average, and after playing this game, I would not pay that for it. I wouldn't pay $10. i am not even sure I would pay 5 It's not a great game. And the first indication that it's not great is the fact that this is no longer 7-Up's mascot. Spot Goes to Hollywood was somebody's bright idea to continue the series after Cool Spot, even when 7-Up themselves had already moved on. This was developed by Eurocom and published by Acclaim in North America and Virgin Interactive Entertainment in Europe for the Genesis and Mega Drive, respectively. Versions were also planned for the failed 32X console, God knows that's an abomination, and for the Super Nintendo, but wisely both were cancelled before release. Somehow, inexplicably, this also got ported to Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation, but that may have just been because it was such a late release in the Genesis life cycle that they decided to try their luck elsewhere. If reviews are any indication, it did not fare any better on those consoles, getting even worse reviews and worse scores. Now let me start out with the positives. Tommy Tallarico did the music for the Genesis version. It's not the greatest soundtrack of all time, but it's definitely got a quality that makes it enjoyable to listen to while playing. You don't wind up hating it. That's what I'd say about most things Tommy Tallarico does in general. I realize he's got people who love him and people who hate him, and with the development of the Amico console, he's definitely polarized the retro gaming community. I'm not one of the haters. I actually met him years ago at a Classic Gaming Expo, and he signed a CD of some of his most famous video game compositions for me, including Earthworm Jim, the one that I think people know him for best. So, I wish nothing but success for Tommy Tallarico. I don't know how the Amico is going to turn out, whether people are going to love it or hate it, but good luck to him. I, I would like to see it turn out well. I have my doubts about a lot of these kind of projects lately, including the Polymega, which I finally backed out of and got my money back when I saw it was going nowhere fast. And I didn't put any money into the Atari VCS or the Amico, so I don't have to jump off those ships if they turn out to sink. And actually, the Atari VCS did come out, so I guess you can't say that it sunk, but I also don't think slapping the Atari brand on what is basically an emulation box really does anything for the Atari that we know and love that we grew up with in the 1980s. I'm getting off track, though. Let me talk about what bothers me about Spot Goes to Hollywood. First of all, Cool Spot was fun because it was a side-scrolling 2D platforming collect-a-thon. This tries to be that, but in a 3D isometric perspective, and it's not as good as Sonic 3D Blast. And I think I've already made it clear that out of Sonic the Hedgehog games on Sega Genesis that I would preferably play that one last beyond all others, even Sonic Spinball and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. I can get used to Sonic 3D Blast over time, but that's only once your brain adapts to the potential nausea of the isometric 3D scrolling and your thumb adapts to the fact that even though it's an isometric perspective, when you hit up, you're actually moving straight north on the screen. You're not moving at a diagonal. You're actually moving up, down, left, right, the way the D-pad does. It's not forcing you to move at the slant. This game does that, which I consider to be a cardinal sin. Let me give you an example of what I mean. If you're playing Marble Madness with a joystick on the Commodore 64, you'd want the ball to roll down when you pull down, right? You don't have a trackball, you don't have any momentum, you just want that ball to move the way the joystick is being pulled. Even though it's an isometric perspective, it makes sense if it moves the way your hand moves. And if Spot Goes to Hollywood did that, like Sonic 3D Blast does, 
I could probably like this game a little more than I do, but it wouldn't remove the other glaring faults this game has. The weapon you can throw is absolutely useless. I don't know why they give it to you or what the point of it is, but nothing you hit with it is damaged by it or knocked out by it. Not these birds that circle overhead, not these crabs that try to block your way, not the cannons that launch themselves back and forth across the deck of the ship. Nothing you throw something at is ever hurt by it. Also, you're told that you need to collect a certain number of spots to finish a level, but I have never found more than five in the entire time I've played this game, and I have scoured the deck extensively. I even tried going in the doors with every button combination I could muster, and it didn't do anything. I also tried jumping up and down on the grates that are in the deck, like maybe you would fall through if you jump up and down and it would reveal a hidden area. If there are, I can't find them. As you can see, there's a point on the screen marked exit, but Spock can't go through it no matter what I do. It's baffling to me. I'm sure somebody in the comments section will be able to tell me what I'm doing wrong, but I'm following the directions as I understood them from both Wikipedia and in the game itself when it says jump, throw, and run. So I started getting desperate at this point, thinking there's something they didn't explain here. Maybe if I just throw enough things at enough things, I'll trigger something, I'll find a way to get to an additional area, I'll just miraculously make it happen. I got so desperate I was even trying to find hidden holes in the rope, like it looks like the coiled rope could be covering up a portal to something. No. Maybe you could break open one of these crates or one of these barrels by just lobbing your weapon at it. No. Nothing works. If there are hidden areas, they are inscrutable. If there are enemies I can hit with my weapon, then I haven't found them. If there's more to the deck of this ship than I've discovered, you can tell me because I can't discover it. I got so desperate, I even tried leaping off the edge of the ship. I was like, okay, maybe there's something hidden there. Take a leap of faith. No, you just die. It's not going to improve the experience, but it made me feel better because I wanted Spot to suffer at that point. I'm like... You stupid bastard. You're hard to control. Your weapon sucks. The platforming is atrocious. And things that you ought to be able to just walk across, like stairs, you actually have to jump up them. You can't just walk up the steps. Everything about this game annoys me, which makes it the quintessential opposite of Cool Spot because everything about that game was fun and enjoyable, and I liked playing it. I don't even understand the point of the things we're picking up on the deck that aren't the spots, like the pirate's cutlass and the pirate flag. I mean, it's cool that this is supposedly a game where a spot went into a movie and you're collecting things in the movie, but they don't do anything for you. They don't unlock anything. They don't advance the plot of the game. If they give you extra points, what's the point of that when you can't even progress beyond the first level? This stinks. It stinks out loud. And I'm not surprised that reviewers were pretty savage on it. The Next Generation review was 2 stars out of 5 for Genesis and 1 star out of 5 for the PS1. The Sega Saturn version got 70% from Sega Saturn Magazine. So that's a publication that was incentivized to score Sega Saturn games highly to get people to buy them to support the Sega Saturn, and they couldn't do better than an F. EGM gave 7 out of 10 to the Genesis version and just under 7 out of 10 to the PS1 version. Personally, I think they were being generous with that score. I will say that Spot is well animated, that the graphics, at least on this one level I can play, look and feel competent. The controls are horrendous though. Spot is a useless protagonist in this game. 
and all you're going to want to do is bang your head against the wall trying to find things that are not in any way obvious to you. I get the comedy of having a shark swim around in the water stains on the deck. Ha ha, that's funny, right? And I get the idea of using a barrel as a trampoline platform to reach higher spots and collect items that you can't otherwise reach with spot. Yeah, spot needs to reach the spot. But again, what do these things do for you? Like, what does it do to collect this item on the top of the broken mast? Nothing. What does it do to see a shark swim around on the deck when you can easily just walk around him? Well, not easily, because these controls are terrible, but that's an obstacle that's easily avoided, so it's comedy for the sake of comedy as opposed to actually being a challenge in the game that makes it harder to play. The only thing that makes it harder to play is that this game is poorly made, poorly designed, poorly executed, Good graphics and a good soundtrack do not make up for the other shortcomings, and this one is full of them. So, I sincerely do not recommend Spot Goes to Hollywood. If I was going to play a 7-Up game, it would either be Cool Spot, or it would be that Spot game that basically mimics Othello, where Spot jumps over the other spots. You can play that one on Game Boy or NES. I would do anything other than play this game. Spot Goes to Hollywood is not worth it. 7up gave up on this character, and I'm giving up on this game. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan, thanks for watching.